Novotny was the leader of Czechoslovakia until 1968. He was a strong Soviet and so quite unpopular with the Czechoslovakian people. And so Brezhnev replaced him with Dubek. And he was still a loyal communist and was loyal to the Warsaw Pact. However, he wanted to change communism to make it more livable and more enjoyable for people. So, for example, he wanted the relaxation of censorship, which meant more freedom, including democracy, for people. And he also wanted to reform the economy with something called market socialism, which basically took aspects of capitalism that made it successful. And he called this socialism with a human face. And then these reforms resulted in Prague Springs, which is a period of political freedom, which included criticism of communists, which was the first problem with it. And so the communist world was unhappy with this and felt like it threatened communism and its rule in Eastern Europe. Brezhnev failed to convince Dubek to stop some of these reforms. And for example, Dubek started talking to the Yugoslavian leader, which Brezhnev saw as a threat and he thought that they were plotting against him. And so he also feared the breakup of the Warsaw Pact. So in August 1968, he sent 500,000 troops into Prague and Dubek was arrested. And then Czechoslovakia returned under strict Soviet control, which was known as normalisation. And then as a result of this, on the 26th of September 1968, the Brezhnev Doctrine stated that the actions of any individual communist country affected all communist countries and so it was the duty of these countries to stop these actions and this meant that other Eastern European states, for example Poland and Hungary, were required to rigidly stick to Soviet-style communism. Dayton means the easing of hostility between countries and this took place between 1969 and 1975 in regards to the Cold War and we can look at reasons why this took place. So in America, Nixon was elected in 1968 and he wanted to take America out of the Cold War since it, co since it cost America billions and also they lost 60,000 troops. And then there was also lots of social problems in America at the time. For example, Martin Luther King was assassinated in 1968 and this caused lots of civil rights movements and marches, protests, which put a strain on the US government. So Nixon wanted to focus on this. And also in 1969, the West Germany Chancellor followed a policy of Ostipolik. Might be might not be pronouncing that right, I'm sorry. But this involved better relations between East and West Germany, which helped cool down relations during this time. And also the Soviet Union wanted to spend money to improve their living conditions and their economy, which was struggling at this time. And so to do this, the first thing that took place was SALT-1, which stands for the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, which was signed in 1972. And this meant no further production of strategic ballistic weapons, no increase in the number of intercontinental ballistic missiles, and no new nuclear missile launchers. So basically, this just slowed down the arms race and meant that neither side had a clear advantage and it cooled down any risk of nuclear war like what happened during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And then the Helsinki Agreement promoted cooperation and sharing. So for example, trade cooperation, respecting human rights for disputes to be settled peacefully. And this again was an attempt to try and cool down relations between both superpowers and the world in general and it helped them form a stable relationship. And it influenced more Soviet Union and US cooperation. For example, the Apollo Soyuz test project in 1975, which was a joint space mission. However, you have to bear in mind that the Soviet Union was still applying the Brezhnev Doctrine, which really did not promote human rights whatsoever. SALT 2 marked the end of Dayton, which was signed by Carter and Brezhnev in 1979, and it agreed that each superpower was limited to 2,250 warheads. However, the USA and Soviet Union's relationship soared and went out of control, 
after the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan in 1979, which I'll get to in a minute. And so the USA Senate never ratified, which means approved the treaty. So it never actually became official US or Soviet Union policy. But still, SALT 1 was quite successful as it reduced the possibility of nuclear war and ensured neither side had first strike capacity, which basically meant they had the ability to destroy the other's nuclear weapons in one blow. Brezhnev gambled that the USA would not get involved if the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, which is what they did in 1979. Because the Soviet Union saw Afghanistan in its sphere of influence and so after the president was assassinated, the Soviet Union wanted to instill a communist government there. And then Carter objected, who was the president of the USA at this point, because he was worried that the Soviet Union would gain more control in the Middle East and he argued that the Soviet Union were trying to spread communism. The Soviet invasion of Afghanistan marked the end of Dayton and the start of the Second Cold War. The Carter Doctrine in January 1980 imposed economic sanctions, so it meant the USA would not trade with the Soviet Union, and it also meant the USA would provide assistance to the Mujahideen, which were the resistant kind of army in Afghanistan who were opposed to the Soviet Union.